Hello everybody, um, this is Alvaro Cortez Jr., also known as Lance Danger, here on the interweb. Um, this is day 11 of the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge, and I did today a little bit more work on the layouts for the pages of the webcomic. I also updated the Canon Girl at the, the webcomics.com. So I've been active in that sense. And ever since yesterday, I've been thinking a lot about um, the discussion that John Romita Jr. had at Bryant Park yesterday that I mentioned that I attended. And in yesterday's video, I showed off the stuff he signed for me. And just like the brief talk that I had with him, uh, I was just thinking while he was about what he was talking about during the discussion and he was mentioning how with his work at DC right now he's pretty much working like eight hours a day to produce the content for DC Comics and after he finishes that he does an additional like two to three hours of work in his own personal project that he's going to be releasing soon, a creator-owned project that Howard Chaikin is doing the dialogue for, and that's, this time I said Howard Chaikin, for some reason in the last video I said Stephen Chaikin or something like that, I don't know, it was just a mind fart moment, I guess, I don't know how you can mistake and I'm swinging a lot in my chair, sorry if I'm giving anyone motion sickness. But I digress, uh, he was talking about, John Romita Jr. was talking about how he puts in all these hours of work for DC Comics and then later on that in the evening he works like two to three hours more on his creator-owned project and especially on Sundays he dedicates more hours to that personal project and I don't know it just kind of got me reminiscing about the time when I would update my webcomic for Pearson the Mighty Warlord pretty much daily uh, up until I had a car accident um, for those of you who didn't know um, I've talked about it briefly in two videos I've recorded over the years but in December 2010, I had I was involved in a pretty bad car accident. Um, I've never really gone into detail about that incident that time. Maybe I will sometime uh, record it and just kind of talk about it if people are curious enough. I guess uh, maybe it'll be therapeutic in a way to to just talk about it I don't know but ever since that car accident I really haven't been able to update as regularly as I would have hoped and sometimes it's just things upon things that kept happening in my personal life afterwards as well but it all kind of like stemmed from that point where I had that car accident I was involved in that car accident and I had a pretty bad concussion and I was seeing double for like almost three months and there was actually a legitimate concern from the doctors that I might not ever be quite normal again after that accident and I guess in a way to try to prove that wrong and I've always been kind of stubborn in a way um, I kind of forced my way back into drawing even with like the double vision I would still keep drawing and doodle and <clears throat> I was, um, excuse me, I would keep telling myself that it's not a question of if it's a matter of when I get back to normal to be able to draw normally again, do normal things again, and thankfully I have been able to do that, but I think in a way I kind of burned myself out in hindsight doing all the artwork back then when I probably wasn't really ready neither physically nor emotionally because after a while I picked up on chapter 19 of the comic on the the webcomic and 
I kind of went through this phase where, again, I was updating daily, and I did so, like, all throughout chapter 19 and 20, where I just kept cranking page after page, and I guess it just kind of burned me out to do that. I, I didn't really take it slow. If anything, I started taking it even harder than... I would before because I guess I had that extra motivation of I can do this I want to prove people wrong I had like a bigger chip on my shoulder than what I usually used to have at that time because I'm the type of person that if somebody tells me you can't do something I'll pretty much probably try to do it twice if I can just to prove a person wrong or just to show that I can I don't know it's Latin pride or something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to call it that and not be very political, politically correct about it, I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Um, I think maybe I burned myself out in hindsight. Like they say, hindsight is twenty twenty, And who knows what would have happened. Maybe I still would have been not updating as much because, again, it wasn't so much that I got burned out but a lot of things happened as well in my personal life at that time that sometimes it would just um, get in the way like sometimes it would be equipment malfunction or a storm randomly flooding the house destroying like artwork and you know just things like that really and and actually once um, the police, the SWAT, the SWAT team actually <laughs> um, went down hard on the house next to my mother's house where I lived in Puerto Rico. Like, I didn't know this at the time, but apparently one of the biggest drug lords in the island <laughs> lived right next door to me. And no, we, we didn't know. Like, people even, like, went in through the, the backyard of my <laughs> house to to reach that house where that drug lord was and and it was just chaos it was like out of a movie <laughs> it was it, it was definitely interesting um it's bad to laugh about it but like afterwards after the arrest and the police removed whatever evidence they needed to take out and left the crime scene or whatever like a lot of the a lot of women and girls that lived in the area, I'm sure they still live in the area, they kind of like peeked their heads out of their houses and one by one just kind of went in the place where that guy lived. I don't know, I guess they must have had keys or something. I mean, they were like go in little by little and like take out stuff of theirs that was in the house and and I'm not even sure why I'm rambling on about this right now. It really has nothing to do with 100 Days of Making Comics. I'll probably work that into a comic or something anyway. I have an autobiographical web strip I do. Maybe I'll... Yeah, yeah, you can just call that a brainstorming for that. You know, like a handful of more minutes for the 100 Days of Making Comics. Yes, you know, like well, well, so anyway, um... Sometimes I feel kind of guilty in a way that I haven't been able to keep up with the pace that I used to have. But if anything, doing these challenges really does help you kind of ease your way back into it. Kind of like last year I discovered, uh, I was introduced into the Inktober, which is doing an ink sketch every day of October. And I think that was really a turning point in my artistic career, really, because up until that point, I really wasn't able to maintain any kind of schedule. But ever since I did Inktober, it kind of made me go over this invisible barrier, I guess. Like, it helped me get over some mental blocks, if you want to call it, creative blocks. Um, and the funny thing is that I actually did a couple of Spider-Man sketches. I did, like, three of 
one of Spider-Man, one of Gwen Stacy, and one of Mary Jane Watson. And actually, Tobey Maguire liked on Instagram my Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson sketches, which absolutely floored me because Tobey Maguire is one of my favorite actors. And of course, Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi trilogy, you can say whatever you want about it, especially the third movie, but it's one of my all-time favorite trilogies. Actually, Spider-Man 3 for a long time was my favorite Spider-Man movie, but over the last couple of years, like, yeah, it, it hasn't aged as well as, say, Spider-Man 2, which was my previous favorite installment, and it's kind of like my favorite one again. But not to knock on Spider-Man 3, like that's like beating on a dead horse, really. But I still really love Spider-Man 3. I don't, like I can understand why a lot of people hate it. But I can also just say that I really didn't like the Amazing Spider-Man reboot. And, and it, I haven't even bothered watching the sequel. Like especially when people that would hate on Spider-Man 3 watched the Amazing Spider-Man sequel and even from the first Amazing Spider-Man and they would be like hmm Amazing Spider-Man 3 wasn't that bad after all that's a shame because um I forget his name I know his last name is Webb ironically enough I guess um he, he can be a pretty good director I watched 500 Days of Summer not too long ago for the first time and I thought it was a fantastic movie and to the Amazing Spider-Man credit I actually really did like the chemistry between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone and I liked a lot of the one-liners that Spider-Man would do because I will give that Amazing Spider-Man credit in that sense that this Spider-Man had a lot more quips and wit compared to like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man but the Peter Parker aspect he was like such a douche the, I really couldn't stand the Peter Parker of the Amazing Spider-Man movies like I guess the perfect Spider-Man movie would be a combination of the Sam Raimi Peter Parker and the Mark Webb, I think, is the name of the director um, of the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Um, kind of combined it with the actual Spider-Man of his movies. Like, I think that would probably be the perfect Spider-Man movie right there. Or, yes, pretty much do what DC is doing with The Flash on the CW. That's been a very fun, a very fun series. Like, I know I've seriously derailed off-topic for this video and I'm just kind of rambling at this point so I guess I'll just wrap it up here um, it's day 11 it's been another flawless victory and hopefully on the next video I won't ramble so much or swing around in my chair as well as much and maybe I'll frame myself a little better on the camera so anyway, thank you for watching if you got this far and have an awesome almost weekend.